everyone, Letty here from Party Planner Paper Read. Today I'm going to share with you a not too shabby shop design team project where I use the June box of the month to make a six by six never ending card. So welcome back everyone. I'm on the design team for the not too shabby shop for this term. Here's their logo. I'll list their website link and a discount code down in the description box below. Here's a little bit more information. So today I'm featuring the June 2023 box of the month from the not too shabby shop. Jamie throws in some freebies. I got some free enamel dots there. It comes with three stamp sets. The first one's called happiness is homemade. It is a super cute stamp set. It reminds me of old school like nursery rhyme books and then this one's called farm friends and it has some really fun sentiments i think that's one of my favorite things about this one and the coloring looks to be really easy on that stamp set and then the last one is called farm live scene builder so this one has a bunch of neat little items that you can put to make up a scene on the farm so really cute farm life sort of images that you can use there. So you've got three stamp sets and then we've got two paper pads and two coordinating ephemera packs. And so the first ephemera pack goes with the Farm Sweet Farm set. And here is a still shot of what comes in that one. So just a bunch of really cute images. You do have the black outline on these images. And then the second one is the Farm Life uh, coordinating set of ephemera. And here's what comes in that one. And you see here, you don't have as harsh of a uh, line all the way around. It's more of a soft line. And then we have two paper pads. So the first one is called that Farm Sweet Farm. Um, it is a six by six paper pad, 24 double-sided sheets. So you've got 12 different patterns, four of each. It is double-sided. Look at that really cute uh, farm you know, pattern. You could just make a card just by cutting that down. It's ready to go. So just really, really fun prints. I really am loving the farm theme in this set. And then the second one is called Farm Life. It's also a six by six paper pad, 24 sheets. What I like about this one is it's very muted and it's perfect for like the back of a scene on your cards. So you could use the ephemera and use these really soft muted tones to really make a cute project. So again, this is the June 2023 box of the month from the Not Too Shabby Shop. And again, I'm gonna list a website link and a discount code down below for you in case you wanna save a little money. So before we dive into today's project, let me show you my previous project, which was a four by six notepad. This was part of the hopping giveaway video series. That series is over. Um, the winner should be announced today, but you still can go back, check out the tutorials. Um, and I will link that tutorial video down in the description box below for you in case you haven't seen that one yet. So today's project, we're going to be making a six by six never ending card. This is one of those cards that just keeps going and going and going. So you'll have all different types of panels and it basically has four different sides you can stand it up just like you see here um, and it's really neat and it's what's really cool is that you're gonna have a ton of different little patterns and that, a lot of paper that you'll be using for this and it just makes a really fun project so I took out some papers today from the two pads that came in the box of the month so I have four different sheets of six by six I tried to find some of the patterns that had like a really pretty scene that was already to Together. And so I am going to be using that scene that has the full kind of herd from the farm together. I'm going to cut it down and we are going to decorate one of the scenes. And then in the second one, I took out this sheet of paper uh, to make another scene on my never ending card. So then we also have some smaller panels that will go sort of in the inside. I just took out two different sheets of paper. I have this one with the little barns and then one that's gonna go on all the little corners, these little bitty squares, and I'm gonna use this pretty sunflower paper. And that's the beauty of this box of the month. You've got two paper pads, so lots to choose from. I did pull out four sheets, one sheet, which is this one from the Farm Life paper pad, and then three sheets from the Farm Sweet Farm paper pad. So four total sheets. I've got some ephemera pieces out as well. And then I also stamped some of the sentiments from the stamp sets onto some die cut circles and a die cut scallop circle. You're gonna need four pieces of cardstock that are three inches by six inches, which is half of a 12 by 12 sheet. So three inches by six inches. We are gonna do some scoring, but I'll show you where to score now. You're gonna go ahead and score all four panels the same. You're gonna score at one and a half and then four and a half. And what you're gonna wanna do is flip it over and go ahead and score at the exact same marks, one and a half and four and a half on the back side as well. And the reason why you really want to make sure that all of those score lines are enforced and they're really, really sturdy is because in order to do this never ending card, you're gonna be folding it over and over and over and you need it to be able to flip flop back and forth. 
So we have all of our four panels scored. Now, this is kind of optional, but I find it very easy if you do a light, light score at one and a half inch on the three inch side on two of the panels, both at the top and at the bottom. And you'll see why in just a second. So I did just a very, very light score at one and a half inches on the top and the bottom, just on one side of two of those uh, of rectangle panels. You see that? So you have kind of a separation here. Now the reason why I did a light score, so you'll have two with it and two without. The reason I did a light score is because when you go to add your glue, that little light score will help you sort of know exactly where to add your glue. So you're gonna put two panels side by side together vertically, just like this, up and down and you're gonna add glue or adhesive to the four little corner squares. So that's why we did those light, light score lines was just so we would know where to put it. Then you're gonna go ahead and flip the, the top panels the opposite way. So the bottom ones are vertical up and down and the top panels are gonna be horizontal or left to right. You're gonna add glue to the little corner squares and I do recommend just starting with one and then go ahead and glue your top panel right on top of that. Once that is firmly in place and you can go ahead and continue to glue the next square and so on and so forth. The reason why I also like to use wet glue for this project is because the, the wet glue gives you just a little bit of extra wiggle time to kind of adjust in case you don't get it right on the mark, you can adjust it and you have a little bit of extra drying time. I've glued the top two corners, now I'm gonna glue the bottom two. So I'm gonna add one bottom corner and then add the top panel that's gonna go again, uh, horizontal, left to right, right on top. And then we'll go ahead and finish it off with the final little square in that corner. So you will have a lot of open area on this card and that's what helps it kind of rotate the pages from one to the next when you're turning it and the never ending process. And I forgot to mention this, but this card was inspired by Sam Calcott. I will link her channel down below and the video that I saw that, that gave me the inspiration for this one. I'm using her design. So definitely check that out. She's amazing. Now you're gonna want to kind of fold those two long areas. And if you see that they're kind of not uh, turning very easily, you are going to want to cut a sliver off of the two long edges. So you saw that where I had a, my sort of the two panels closed and they were not really like opening very easily. I'm going to go ahead and open up the the card and sort of uh, tr just trim off a very slight little sliver off of the two longest panels. So not the little short panels, but the actual long six inch sides. So now it seems like things are rolling a lot smoother for me. So the next thing I'll do is just go ahead and take my bone folder and I'm using my fingers as well to just really enforce all of those folds. And you really want to be able to enforce them because again, you want to be able to keep continuously folding it and turning it in this you know, never ending card. So I am taking my little bone folder there, just really enforcing all of those folds. You see here, the card will stand up. And I tend to think that this is sort of the main view, which is this this one with the kind of horizontal uh, patterns or panels. Um, to me, that's the, the most kind of easy view to stand for this card. So that is kind of what I'm going to use as my main focal point. Each of those squares is two and three quarters by two and three quarters for your paper mats. The, the small rectangles are one and a quarter by two and three quarters. And then the small little bitty squares are one and a quarter by one and a quarter. And you'll see you have a ton of those as well. So I'm going to take you step by step. We're going to cut down each of the four papers so you know exactly how to cut them down to kind of finish out this never ending card. And then I'll decorate at the end and I'll come back for a final recap at the very end of the video. So I have chosen my main print, which is this one. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut it at two rows of two and three quarters, just like this from the bottom, because the bottom had more of the pattern print. And so you'll have a little scrap left over, that's normal. Then what you'll do is you'll go ahead and finish cutting each of the panels. So you're gonna cut each paper into one and a quarter, and then two and three quarters, and then one and a quarter again. And that will make each of your three little small panels that will go on that bottom row from your paper. And it's important that you c cut it continuously and not skip over because otherwise, if you have a little print on or a pattern on your paper, it won't be a, like a, a continuous flow. It'll, you'll, it'll look like if you had pieced some papers together. So you're gonna repeat that, those same cuts with the top row, which is one and a quarter, two and three quarters, and then one and a quarter, just like that. And again, you'll have a small scrap. Then the next step will be just to glue down all of those panels to your card base. I have done so 
off camera. So you see here, this is gonna be my main panel. This is the kind of the main view that you see when you stand up the card. And so the next thing I wanna do is my next big scene. So I'm gonna kind of turn it a couple times until I have another big area. And you see there, I use that same pattern, but what I'm gonna do on this new card that I'm making is I'm gonna use the other little sort of pasture area uh, that had a lot of sky and the greenery. So I'm gonna use this print to cut down to make this panel. So you see here, I have six little small panels and they're more vertical, whereas the first section was horizontal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our trimmer again and we're gonna cut vertically at two and three quarters twice. So we're gonna get two sort of columns of two and three quarters and then you'll let be left with a little scrap on the end, just like that. And then what we'll do is cut down these columns into our segments, which again is one and a fourth, and then two and three fourths, and then one and one fourth for the final top little section, just like this. So then the you'll basically have a small scrap left over and then you'll just repeat with the second panel. So one and a fourth, two and three fourths, and one and a fourth. And again, cut in a continuous pattern or fashion so that way your print doesn't get sort of broken up. You'll glue all of those panels onto your card base, which I just did off camera again. And then now I have my two largest panels ready to go. You see there? So then the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on these little squares or these larger squares and the smaller squares. So I've got four of those sort of larger squares that are two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I can get all four from this one sheet of paper that has the, the barns. So I'm gonna cut all four panels from that one sheet and I'll show you how to do that. Now, one thing I noticed was two of my panels are sort of side by side, which are those front two that you see there. So I'm gonna try to cut my pattern from the side so I have those two patterns right next to each other and they sort of have a continuous flow. So I'm gonna cut it at two and three quarters from the side, have a little scrap, and then with what I have left over, I'm gonna cut it down to two and three quarters and then go ahead and cut two additional squares. And these I'm gonna go ahead and just use for my top and bottom square that you'll see on the next kind of slide of the card. But for these two that kind of go right next to each other, I will put them on the outer sections of the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of my panels, which I just did. Again, the miracle of technology here. So I've glued all four of those panels. Now I'm going to work on the small little squares that I have left, which are eight of them. And these are one and a quarter by one and a quarter. I'm going to use the sunflower paper. So again, one and a quarter by one and a quarter. And I'm going to cut eight of them from this sheet. We will have a healthy little piece of scrap. So I'm going to cut two strips that are one and a quarter down. And then what I'm going to do is cut those strips down into segments that are one and a quarter. Um, and you will have a lot of scraps. It really doesn't matter which way you cut those squares because they're so far in the corners. They're not really right next to each other. So you should, you should be fine um, just cutting it into those little squares. And so one of the things that I was doing was cutting it into two and a half inches and then cutting it down to one and a quarter twice. So I'm going to glue all of my panels on my card base. These are the scraps that I had left over. I just wanted to show you that before I wrap up with my final part of the card. So here is my card. I have not finished adding any embellishments, but you see here you have all of our panels ready to go the larger squares, the smaller squares, and then of course our full page panels. So this is our never ending card. The next step is simply gonna be just to finish decorating with the ephemera pieces and the sentiments. So all of your embellishments that you have, you're gonna finish decorating this card, which is what I'll do off camera. I'll come back and I'll do a full recap right here up next. So again, this was the Not Too Shabby Shop June box of the month. We made a six by six never ending card and I added my sentiments right there in the middle and then you see here I added some ephemera pieces I have a you you are utterly amazing with a little cow I have my little panels and then when you open it you have also the little howdy which is kind of neat because I hit it with the corner of that other square you see that so so that way the sentiments wouldn't clash um, and then I have a ton of little images from the ephemera pieces so super cute now on this final panel I do think it's a little bit plain so what I'll do is I'll bring in a stamp with like maybe some butterflies maybe some little bugs I think I can definitely bring in some additional things and really really knock this one out of the park but i think this never ending card is so fun definitely worth a try you might want to just watch this video a couple times and you'll definitely get all of your cuts and your measurements and once you start making these you're not going to want to stop so again that was our never ending card i have two the one that i made off camera the one that we made together today and then i'll also link the video for my previous tutorial down in the description box below 
that using this June box of the month from the Not Too Shabby Shop, I have a link and a discount code down below for you in case you want to use that. And you can always check out the hashtag N2S Farm Life for additional inspiration using this box of the month. Thanks for visiting, everyone. I hope you subscribe, like this video, follow me on Instagram. Here are a couple videos I think you might enjoy. Happy crafting!